Now, many of you have been asking me, literally begging me, Pastor Mike, I watch all of your teachings, and the one thing you haven't taught about is how to close the door on the demonic and how to completely get free from the activity happening in my home. Hey, do you have children? Drop in the chat right now if you have kids. The Bible says raise them up in the ways of the Lord and from the ways of God. The problem is we kind of raise them in the ways of God, but we let the iPads and the phones and the television raise them in the ways of the world. And so our kids have have the, the ways of the world and they have the ways of God at the same time. And so the reason why we're doing this tonight is because we are breaking down idols and we are saying, no, no more of that. We are not gonna try to serve two masters. We will serve the Lord. Come on, smash the thumbs up right now if you're with me. I need to see it. All right, so I'm going to take you on a brief journey of teaching, and then we are going to immediately go into the actions connected to evicting the enemy from your house. But here's some signs that you need to do this. One of the signs is that you feel that there's this foreboding presence, maybe a darkness. Maybe you feel like when you walk up your stairs, something is walking behind you. Maybe you feel like something's watching you. Maybe you've had poltergeist-like activity. I'm talking about door slamming, light switches going on and off, uh, bumps and creaks in the middle of the night. I don't know. It could be demonic in nature. Sometimes people experience ghosts or what they think is a ghost. We know it's a demon in disguise. Come on, I'm speaking the truth to somebody. Maybe it's a voice. I talked to somebody recently who heard a male voice actually saying, shh, shh, it's gonna be okay, to her baby, and there was no man in the room physically. It was a familiar spirit. And so you may be dealing with something of that nature where you're hearing disembodied voices, things calling your name. You may need uh, to do what we're about to do right now. Um, Here's something else. Maybe there's just no peace in your home. Maybe you're constantly on edge, full of anxiety, fear, apprehension, worry, dread, doubt. I don't know what it is. but Or let me just say this. Maybe you... Maybe you came out of Egypt, but now Egypt needs to come out of you. Maybe you've got items and things that from another part of your life that you've been holding on to emotionally, but you know that spiritually it's wrong. This is for you, okay? If, if any one of the things that I just mentioned are for you, can you drop in the comments and just say, that's me. I want us to see our global family together and, and know that we're not alone, okay? And so just say, that's me in the chat right now so that people can see that they are not alone. Now, let me just start. When I say brief, I mean a super brief teaching, and then we are going to destroy the works of darkness, and we are going to spiritually cleanse your house. Now, many of you think, I don't know how to pray. Well, I got you. I am going to do the praying for you, and then you can come into agreement with me, and you can actually take your phone and walk around your house. You can physically take your phone and go into each room with me as we do this journey. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28 says, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. God says, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, or a curse if you do not obey the commands of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. So in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26, we see the personality of God. We see the character of God. He's saying, I'm putting before you a choice. You do have a choice. And today, if you can hear me, this is the Holy Spirit giving you a choice. You can have witchcraft. You can have tarot cards, psychic mediums. You can have the occult. You can have sage crystals. Or you can have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Prince of Peace can reign in your home. You have to choose. You can't have both. You can't get a word from God and a word from your horoscope in the same house anymore. Who is going to choose the Lord? Who is going to choose the Lord? That's what I want to know. One of the biggest ways that we can we can be cursed is by acknowledging and worshiping false gods, which include cult, cults or false religions and new age religion, which takes us to the occult. Okay? And, and that's how we live cursed. 
In Deuteronomy chapter 11, God's saying you have a choice, but there is a blessing and a cursing. Now we know in Galatians, Jesus died on the cross so that the curse can be broken. But that doesn't mean that you are you that doesn't mean that you're not living under the curse because you have to choose. The choice didn't go away. It's just that Jesus now freed us to be completely free from all of the curses, but we still have to make a choice. Can I get an amen? All right. Isaiah chapter 47. Man, I, let me just say this before I read the next scripture. I feel the fear of the enemy right now. I can, it's a palpable feel, the fear. I can feel it. I can sense it. The devil is so intimidated by this moment in your life. There are things in your home, physical objects that are connected to uh, your, that are connected to a curse. They're, and they represent choices you made. They represent decisions that you've made, and you are about to get free. So Isaiah chapter 47, verse 11 through 14, it says disaster. Now, I want you, before I read this, I need you to lean in. I need you to listen up. I need you to get serious because this is, this is prophetic. This is God talking. And I know that you go to churches sometimes and pastors won't read the whole Bible. They'll just give you a few excerpts but I'm gonna read you a portion of the Bible you may not have ever heard. Disaster will come upon you and you will not know how to conjure it away. A calamity will fail, uh, will, will fall upon you that you cannot ward off with a ransom. This is Isaiah chapter 47, verse 11, okay? This is in your Bible. This is a prophetic warning. The prophet Isaiah said, a catastrophe you cannot foresee will suddenly come upon you. And this is why, verse 12 says why. Are you listening? Keep on then with your magic spells and with your many sorceries, which you have labored at since childhood. It says, perhaps you will succeed, perhaps you will cause terror, all the counsel you have received has only worn you out. All, all of the counsel you've received through witchcraft has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. It's like the prophet Isaiah is mocking them. Yeah, let all those, let all the people you watch online that give you psychic words, all the astrologers, let all the people that you call on the phone and they give you a psychic word, let them come and save you from what God's about to release on you. And it says in verse 14, surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. These are not coals for warmth. This is not a fire to sit by. Now, I wanted to read that to you because we're getting ready to cleanse your home. And I want to tell you that the judgment of God is real. Jesus dying on the cross satisfied the wrath of God. Come on, and you need to understand, it didn't go away. The penalty of sin, the consequence of astrology, psychic mediums, the consequence of these accursed items and these practices that we bring into our lives, it didn't go away. Actually, the consequence is still there. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is salvation. It is eternity with Jesus in heaven, but it's because of Jesus it's not because God changed. And the reason why I need to say that is because some of you are playing with these items. You're playing with these practices. You're playing with these things. And the wrath of God has been satisfied by the sacrifice of Jesus, but the wages of sin is still death. The only hope you have is forgiveness. The only hope you have is the blood of Jesus washing you clean covering your family, covering your home. And I want to say one last thing because I'm about to, we're about to go for it. Do you feel it? Now listen to me. If you go and throw a whole bunch of objects away right now in your garbage as I'm calling things out, but you don't serve the Lord, then all you've done is clean your house. You haven't cleansed your house. I'm not talking about doing a house cleaning. 
I'm talking about cleansing. I'm talking about, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord and what you see looks like what we serve. <laughs> Come on now, let me just, let me rewind that. What we see is looks like what we serve now. And instead of having all these trinket gods and all these things that we get when we go on vacation and all these things that represent idolatry and, and no, no, no. What, what you see in my home now is the result of who I serve. And if you don't see an idol, it's because I don't serve an idol anymore. I serve the living Jesus. Can I get an amen from a couple thousand people right now? All right, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 25 and 26. The images of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet the silver and gold on them and do not take it for yourselves or be ensnared by it, for it is detestable to the Lord your God. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house, or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Regard it as vile and utterly detested, for it is set apart for destruction. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7. God is the same yesterday. He is the, come on, finish it with me. He's the same today and he's the same forevermore. That means the God of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter seven is still God today. And so Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 25 said, hey, I'll tell you what to do with these things you have in your house. Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 25 and 26 says, the images of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet. In other words, don't desire so much the silver and gold that's on them and do not take it for yourselves or you will be ensnared by it. There are people who say, well, I couldn't possibly throw that away because it's gold, it's silver, it came from a family member. I know that technically it's an idol, but see, you're coveting it and you're attributing value to it and the Lord says it's detestable. And if you set it aside for yourself, it says this. It says this in the scriptures. It says, do not bring a detestable thing into your house or you, just like that thing, will be set apart for destruction. Regard it as vile and utterly detest it. And I actually want to pray right now. And I, I need the help of the Holy Spirit to do this work. I need the help of the Holy Spirit because... This is not religion. I am not giving you religion. This is not me uh, giving you some kind of legalism. This is not me giving you some kind of Pentecostal church stuff, satanic panic, 1980s, burn your book stuff. I am telling you that there is a standard of righteousness and holiness and no man is gonna have to tell you what's detestable, but the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will begin to show you and teach you. Come on, does somebody hear me right now? They will, the Holy Spirit will show you and teach you and reveal to you what you need to do. See, religion is a voice on the outside trying to get on the inside, telling you what's right and what's wrong. But the Holy Spirit is the voice of God on the inside of you, giving you an awareness of what you should do. Now, that's good. That's good. The Holy Spirit will tell you. And I believe right now he's quickening you. That means he's, he's making you aware that you need to get rid of some things. Now, I'm going to go down a list, though because I do wanna at least help point you in the right direction. I wanna personally thank you for smashing that thumbs up and the share button and helping as many people as possible getting this message because I would love nothing more than God of heaven, come on, to literally look at what's happening on the earth and see tens of thousands of people setting their heart right and saying enough is enough, I belong to Jesus, all right. Here's, here's, here's what I want you to look for. Occult. What is the definition of something from the occult? It is ridding your homes of witchcraft and satanic objects, supernatural influence that is not from God. So the occult is supernatural influence that is not from God. It is influence, it is supernatural, but it is not from God. That is the occult. So you must rid yourselves of these things. 
Astrology and horoscopes are demonic. Voodoo is demonic. Catholic objects, such as images of saints, crucifixes, candles, holy water, and Catholic prayers are demonic. Objects or written prayers that have been used in witchcraft or given to you by a witch are demonic. Crystals are demonic. Sage is demonic. These things hold supernatural influence that is not from God. They are not helping you. They are hindering you. They're standing in between you and a personal relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Those items represent counterfeit comfort. Comfort, in the moment that you came to possess those objects, you felt that your life might get better and it, and it comforted you, but it is a counterfeit comfort. The only true comfort comes through the living God, Jesus Christ, that you can know and experience and hear clearly through the person of the Holy Spirit. Any and every object that represents counterfeit comfort needs to be removed from your house tonight, now. Now, if you have books, what am I talking about books? There's a difference between learning for information and then receiving impartation. If the book is influencing you to actually change your worldview and your philosophical perspective away from a biblical worldview, then that book represents what? Demonic influence. It's one thing to learn. It's another thing to be influenced. You've got to make up your mind. You are going to remove any and every influence. Sometimes we have images in our homes. We have pictures. We have things that need to be dealt with because if we don't deal with these things, yes, it's a dragon, but behind that image of a dragon is the true dragon, is the true demonic. Yes, it's a book about world religions, but it may influence the religion, come on, of, and the, the spiritual influence it may represent of that religion. You've got to wake up. You've got to wake up. You have to wake up. You have to wake up. Now, listen, it might be uh, things that have to do with kundalini, worship, kundalini yoga. It could be things uh, that have to do with the saints, it could be dolls, dolls with no faces. Come on, I don't know what it is. The Lord is going to begin to bring it to you right now. He's going to begin to show you. Again, this is not legalism. This is freedom to separate yourself. Come on, any tarot cards, angel cards, any candles that you've lit in a ritualistic way. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes there's toys the backstory of those toys and the narrative that's connected to those toys actually represents the demonic realm and it's influencing your children. It's influencing. And listen, if you're a parent and you say, I can't possibly throw away a video game. I can't possibly throw away, uh, you know, my kids toys. Yes, you can. They live in your house because these things represent um, all kinds of gateways and portals. Here's another one. Very popular influence of Native Americans, dream catchers. Anytime you have uh, something connected to the, the Native American culture, most often it's not, um, let me, it's, it's not as benign as you think. This dream catcher is a spiritual influence. That, that's why I define a cult as anything the supernatural influence that's not from God. I'm talking about the, the, the God of the Bible. You know what I'm talking about. I know this is helping somebody. All right, now here's what I want you to do. As you begin to gather those things up, and as you're looking at toys, you you're just gonna have to use discernment from the Holy Spirit. My daughter's rooms are completely full of toys. This is not throw away every single toy. It's use your discernment, you know, okay? And there are toys that are connected to stories and narratives that are not from God. And you have to ask yourself, when my kid watches that programming, how does it influence them? Do they become violent? Does my child become rebellious? Does my child become lazy and lethargic? That is an influence over your child. It's that simple. What is the influence? And if it is an influence other than God, 
And that toy and those different things are connected, movies, figurines, things of that nature. Ask yourself, do I like the kind of person my child is under their influence? If you watch a movie and it causes you to lust and it's perverse in nature, come on, what do you think? And these are the questions that you need to ask yourself because the thing is, as thousands of you watch this and go through this house cleansing with me, there is the potential of thousands and thousands of items for me to list. But it's not about me listing every single item. It's about you being led by the Holy Spirit. Because if I were to give you an exhaustive list of all the things you should throw away, that makes me an arbiter of religion. But I'm not here to give you legalism and religion. I'm here to empower you through the Holy Spirit so that you can listen and obey his voice and that you can do what you need to do. Because there's no way that I can possibly answer all of your questions about every single item, but you will know. And I wanna say this, last thing, and then we're gonna move on to the next and final portion of this global house cleansing. If you have to ask about it, it's probably not of God. Let's just keep it simple. It's There's something about the fact that you even feel that you should ask about it that should reveal to you what is, what is being disturbed in your spirit that's causing you. Maybe that's the beginning of discernment. If this is helping you, I need you to smash that thumbs up right now, all right? If you need to ask about it, that is the result of your spirit becoming aware of something and you just need to immediately and instantaneously obey. Don't wait, all right? All right. Okay, now the next thing is this. When we see Passover in scripture, the blood of a lamb was applied to the doorpost. The spirit of death would pass by. And if you did not have the blood of the lamb applied to the doorpost, then you would actually experience, they, you, they would be a death in the family. That was the very first path, Passover, the firstborn son, which is the sign of generational inheritance. So what does that mean for you? Jesus, the perfect lamb, has been sacrificed so that his blood can be applied over the doorposts of our physical homes, our dwelling places, so that way the spirit of death passes by. But when you don't have the blood of the lamb applied to the doorpost of your life, of your being physically, to say, I am covered by the blood, me personally, and then my family, then what happens is demonic spirits, they begin to get access to your home. So we need to start with salvation. If you question whether or not you're saved, if you question whether or not that the blood of the lamb is applied to the doorpost of your life, forget about your house for a moment. We're gonna go there next. But if you can't tell me that uh, the blood of the lamb has been applied to your, to your life, we're gonna do that now. We are going to do that now. I want everybody to repeat after me. Now, you're just borrowing my words. The power is not in you repeating these words. The power is in you meaning these words. Romans chapter 10, verse nine says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is the savior and you will be saved. So I want you to start by this. Come on, I see some praying mothers, some praying fathers. I see some single people right now praying. I see you gathering things up in the spirit, getting ready to throw them out. I see you getting ready to step into the next level, the next season of your life, but it starts with choosing today who you will serve. So if you're choosing with me, I want you to repeat after me. Just say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. Wash me with your blood, Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. I give you my life. I surrender to you. I give you my home. I give you my family. I give you my children. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, just that first part of the prayer we did was you coming under the blood of Jesus, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's the first step. You just chose, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you have, um, if you have olive oil, I'm gonna talk to you about the anointing, anointing oil. If you have olive oil in your house, people ask all the time, 
you know, what is anointing oil? How do I get anointing oil? Do I have to buy anointing oil? I'm telling you right now, Acts chapter 19, they used handkerchiefs. It's, it's not about the actual oil. There's, it's not about, oh, this oil came from Israel. It came from Jerusalem. No, it's not, oh, this, this pastor prayed over this oil and made it more powerful. No, I'm talking about as a believer, oil represents the power of God. It represents the protection of God. It represents the provision of God. As a good shepherd would pour oil over the head of the sheep, no gnats and bugs could get in their eyes or their ears in an infestation. And so all the oil is, is represent, it's a representation of power, okay? So I want you to grab your oil. If you've got olive oil, hold that olive oil in your hand. Come on, hold that olive oil in your hand. And what I want you to do is we are going to begin to pray. Now, you can go to the doors now um, you, of your home. We're going to start in the living room. We're going to start in the, in the main common areas of your house. You can go to the front door, and then you go from the front door into the living room, and we're going to begin to move around. Now, don't go to the bedrooms yet because we're going to save that. All right, if you've got your anointing oil, I want you, um, I want you now to begin to, to deal with that, okay? All right, now, this right now is gonna help somebody. As you get that anointing oil, now the anointing oil is just represent, it's a representation. Now, uh, I see people in the comments saying, I got my oil, I got my oil. Now, the thing that I need you to understand is if you don't have oil, that's okay. You don't need a pastor to physically come into your house. That's okay. I'm here with you to guide you. But see, the, the gospel is that you are a nation of priests. The Bible is, the Acts chapter two says, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. So I'm trying to help you understand that you have the same resurrection power that Paul and Peter had inside of them. It's inside of you. All right, so what I want you to do is begin to anoint the doorpost. Come on, this is just symbolic of the power of God. And I'm gonna begin to pray for your home and you can say amen to come into agreement with me and we can go through your home and pray right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that as we walk through the living room, as we go to the door, as we anoint, that represents your power, your provision, your favor upon our houses. I just release and speak the favor of God in every single home under the sound of my voice. The favor of God, the favor of God, the favor of God, the divine favor that flows from Jesus, not because we're good, but because God is good. And Father, I thank you you right now that as the anointing is being released, God, that burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of your Holy Spirit, that strongholds are coming down. Now, y'all, some of you that got items in your home, you need to begin to grab those items, physically break them if you can. Don't hurt yourself. Throw them in the garbage. We are, we are deciding today whom we will serve. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 26 says, I set before you a blessing or a curse. We choose the blessing. Come on, that's what you're choosing. We are not gonna live under the curse of the occult, of witchcraft. We're not gonna live under the curse of sexual perversion any longer. Just begin to anoint every doorpost, every, yeah, come on, somebody. Man, I feel the fire of God. Let's just continue to pray. I know many of you are agreeing with me in prayer. Father, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your fire, God, that's gonna be released into each and every single one of our houses, that our kids are gonna know you, that our house is gonna be a house of revival. It's gonna be a house full of prayer and supplication and devotion. God, I thank you that even as we're praying for our houses right now, that there you are actually going to stir up a holy hunger and a desire on the inside of us to seek you in prayer like never before, that worship is gonna go forth from our house Come on, somebody, release that, release that, release that. Our home is going to be a house of worship. We're going to pray like we never prayed. We're going to worship like we never worshiped before. We're going to go deeper. The fire of God's going to fall in our house. And Lord, we thank you that you're lifting up a holy standard in our house, up against the enemy, a holy standard against the enemy. 
All right, y'all, I'm trusting by faith that you've already thrown away some items, that you've like broken those things, that you've gotten those things dealt with in your home. I'd love to see you tag me uh, and, and take pictures of it, document this journey of freedom that your house went through. Now, last but not least, as we come to a close, all right, I want you to go to your, uh, if you have other rooms, your bedroom, your children's room, we're gonna go into the rooms. Now, everybody's got different living situations, so I'm trying to make this apply to everybody. But if you've got, um, you know, kids' bedrooms or whatever, let's go. Uh, man, this is amazing. Somebody in the chat says, my two-year-old literally just said Jesus for the first time. <laughs> Come on, somebody. This is revival breaking out in our homes. Don't, listen, don't ever expect God to do something in church that doesn't happen in your home. And a lot of times we go to church and we want the church to be off the charts and we want church to be fire. But then the Lord's like, y'all, you don't even do that in your home. So it starts in our home. It starts with us. Can I get an amen? All right, so here's what I want you to do now. Go towards the bedrooms. And again, if you've got your anointing oil, you can anoint the, the doorpost of each one of the bedrooms. And that represents the power of God. It represents the blood of Jesus. It's just a representation. Now, if you don't have oil, like I said, it's just a physical representation. It's all right. Now, we want to begin to pray. Let's start praying for our children. Come on, let's go in. Father, I speak and declare that our children will serve you all the days of their life. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke the destroyer. We rebuke every demonic spirit that's on assignment to rob our children of the best years of their life. We break and cancel every assignment from Satan by the blood of Jesus now in the name of Jesus. And we say our children will, will strengthen in righteousness, will strengthen strengthen in holiness, will strengthen. Come on, somebody. I feel the glory of God. I, Lord, I thank you that your glory will begin to saturate and permeate the rooms of our children, that that same Shekinah glory that was in the Old Testament temple where the ministers couldn't even stand to minister would be released into our homes through the Holy Spirit right now, right now. And we call our teenagers back to God. We call our teenagers back. We Man, we're building altars. That's it. Whew, I feel the power of God. We are building altars in our homes. We're going to build an altar unto the Lord. We're going to raise up a holy standard now. We're going to build an altar. Come on. Our children are going to fall in love with Jesus. Their first love is going to be Jesus. Their first love is going to be the Lord. Our children are going to fall in love with the Lord. Come on, go into your bedroom if you have to right now. I thank you, Father, that right now, even in our place of abode, even in our bedroom, even in our bedroom where we sleep, every demonic spirit, I speak to you now, that is trying to thwart, thwart our, our slumber and our sleep, trying to rob us. And I, I break your power now. Every single tormenting spirit under the sound of my voice, go now in the name of Jesus. You must leave now. Every tormenting spirit, every lying spirit, every perverse spirit, every spirit of sexual immorality, every perversion spirit, now every spirit of pride in the name of Jesus, go now, now, now. We break your power in the name of Jesus. Your curse is broken now in the name of Jesus, go Whew, man, I feel such a relief. All right, I want to pray one more time together. We've been at it for a long time, but I don't know if you can feel the atmosphere of your home like changing. If you can feel the atmosphere changing right now, let me know. If, you're, if you can feel something shift, I, I just felt a relief like, like immediately, even as I began to, to pray that last time. I was like, wow, did you feel the same thing? Let me know. Let me know. All right, I want to pray one more time because here's the thing. God does not remove without replacing. I'm going to say it again. God does not remove without replacing. So you, it's one thing to remove accursed objects. And then after that, you remove, uh, you know, the, the next thing is like, you, you know, you remove sin. God, forgive me, confession. And then you remove the demons but then still have a lack of the presence of God. 
And so it's not about removing, it's about replacing. It's like this, people tell me, pray for my husband, he's addicted to alcohol. Okay, God doesn't wanna just remove alcohol, he wants to replace it with his Holy Spirit and new wine. Okay, because God's not gonna leave us in this place. Yeah, of just, okay, I feel something just shifting right now. Let's just pray. Everybody, let's invite the Holy Spirit now. So you let me just take you back. You've anointed your doorpost from your living room, your front door, your children's rooms, your bedroom, your bathroom, your kitchen. Come on, you've went around the house. You've destroyed all these accursed objects and things that the Holy Spirit have pointed out to you. He's pointed it out to you. And then that last but not least, we're gonna build an altar right now before the Lord spiritually. We're gonna build an altar. We're gonna, we're gonna allow the Holy Spirit to come in in a tangible way. Man, I feel the presence of God so strongly. So just, if you can, I know some of you have your phone in your hand, just put your phone down, turn it up. Just lift your hands towards heaven with me right now. Come on, just lift your hands as a sign of complete and total surrender. It, it, when, you, when you lift your hands towards heaven, what you're saying is, God, pick me up. Abba, I belong to you. So with every hand lifted right now around the world in every home, I want you to repeat after me, say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my home. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you can have every door, every crack and every crevice. It belongs to you. Everything that happens in this home, let it be to glorify you. Everything that you do, God, I pray, everything that's done in secret, everything that's done in secret, God, would glorify you in this home. Come on, somebody just begin to say this. Every single thing, Lord, that happens in this home, Come on, just use my words. Say, Lord, let it glorify you. Let there be nothing that happens hidden in this home that doesn't glorify your name, Jesus. Father, we give you, we dedicate our home. Now I want you to put your name because we're gonna give our lineage. Some of you need to rise up and lay claim to your birthright. I feel the anointing all over this. Lay claim to your birthright. Some of you need to put your last name in this prayer. You need to say, God, I give you the Signorelli family. You say your family name. I give you the Signorelli family. I give you my family. I give you my lineage. God, everything that we've ever been, redeem it for your glory. Redeem our past. Redeem where we come from. Come on, somebody. Begin to say this. Give them, give them, give God, just turn it over. God, we give all of our, for a thousand generations through my bloodline, for, for a thousand generations through my bloodline, God, that every generation that comes, that proceeds from me, that comes out of me, God, will glorify you. Lord, oh, man, I feel... There, something is just shifting right now. Something's changing. I see people in the comments in the chat putting their family name in the chat right now. We're turning it over, God. What it means in my family to serve you now, it's changing the meaning of the name of my family. And I stand on the solid rock and I will not serve anyone or anything else. I will serve the Lord. If that's you, can I just, can you just say an amen? Come on, can you just drop an amen in the chat right now? Come on, just say amen. That's it. <laughs> you have just spiritually cleansed your family, your home, your life. I mean, that's it. I'm a sweaty mess. <laughs>